Today we have a special episode where Mark and I are comparing the FS5 and the Canon C100. What's up everyone, today we are comparing two amazing cameras that you can get for a steal on the used market. So the Sony FS5 and the C100 Mark I. Yeah, the Mark I, uh, the thing is that it is still holding ground pretty well and uh, you can get it for a steal. So it's the same thing with the FS5, uh, got a price reduction not too long ago. Um, so let's see how they compare. So first of all, both cameras are really uh, similar in shape. They have a great form factor. You can hold them uh, really well. Both of them has, have a top handle, uh, side grip and an LCD screen. All the buttons are easily accessible to operate the cameras. All right, so feature-wise, both cameras use SD cards. The Canon C100 records onto UHS-1 cards. Those are pretty cheap to buy. The Sony records onto UHS-3 cards. Those are more expensive media to buy. As for the codec, the Canon C100 records an AVC HD. The Sony FS5 records XAVC codec. As for resolution, the C100 records from a 4K sensor. It's downsampling to 1080p at 24 megabytes per second. The FS5 records 4K natively at 100 megabytes per second. For the audio feature, the Canon C100 has a built-in stereo mic in the top handle. Uh, there's two channels of XLR audio as well as a 3.5 stereo input directly on the body. The Sony FS5 has two channels of XLR audio. It has a built-in microphone on the top handle as well, but there is no 3.5 millimeter input. Another feature that both cameras have is the built-in ND filters. The C100 has a three-stage built-in ND filters, two, four, and six stops. Uh, the FS5 has a variable ND filter ranging from two up to seven stops. Both cameras also have features that we like that each other cameras don't have. With the FS5, for example, you can record RAW with an external recorder. Uh, this requires a firmware update, uh, which is pretty pricey. If uh, you bought a used camera, chances are that you might have that update uh, already, which is great. Uh, another feature that we like, uh, you can record proxy at the same time that you're recording your footage. So if you're using an older computer or a laptop, this is really useful because you can use that footage to edit and speed up your process and then replace it with the, the footage you, uh, you got. Uh, this camera also does slow motion uh, up to 960 frames per second in 1080p and it does it well. Uh, so it's always good to have that option if you do uh, need to film some slow motion. Uh, it also has an SDI port out so you can plug uh, any uh, monitor and what have you that requires that. You can use the S-Log2 and S-Log3 a color profile which uh, gonna benefit uh, you at the end for color correction so you can use the full 14 uh, stops of dynamic range. Uh, it also has a little, uh, little tab here where you can switch between uh, ISO pretty quickly. Uh, I just find it really useful on shoot when you you know you need to bump up that ISO or bring it back um, and what have you so it's just a, a neat little feature that I like. And also the uh, the handle has a, a swivel uh, tab, so it's really it's really quick to just change the uh, the angle of the uh, the grip. So this is just something that is really useful. It's those little things that makes it a lot better. There's a couple of cool features on the C100. Uh, first off is the EOS HD color profile. If you're shooting with Canon DSLR, they can easily be matched with uh, the C100 in post. Um, there's the Canon C-Log that can easily be graded in post, especially if we compare it to the Sony S-Log profile, which can be quite tricky at, at times. Uh, I really, really like that there's a built-in waveform monitor in this camera. I much prefer the waveform monitor uh, to the Instagram, but that's personal. And uh, last feature is the playback button that are located underneath the screen. Directly accessible, quite fast. Everything you need is just underneath the screen. All right, so now we'll move into the uh, part of the video where we compare uh, the visual of each camera. So the footage that we filmed. So we will compare C-Log and S-Log with the dynamic range. We'll compare the rolling shutter, the moiré of both cameras. We will try the low light and the image detail and sharpness. 
So let's jump right into it. All right, so as for the dynamic range, uh, as the FS5 only works in S-Log at ISO 3200, we had to match both camera with the same settings. So as you can see, all the highlights and the clouds are actually clipped. So as the C100 was shooting at ISO 3200, we had to use the built-in ND6 filter to compensate. Here for the FS5, we can see the 14 steps of dynamic range it offers. What a difference here. The camera keeps all the details in the shadow and highlights. Again, this is with the same settings and ND filter as the C100. Here you can see the rolling shutter on the C100. As I mentioned earlier, it's quite minimal, easy to repair, and compared to the FS7, it's almost unnoticeable. The FS5 has pretty bad rolling shutter, nothing that can be fixed in post, but something significant enough that you need to be conscious about it. If we put them side by side, we can see the C100 handles the rolling shutter a lot better than the FS5. The window frames are actually slanted to the right in real life, and here the FS5 rolling shutter makes them go the other way while the C100 keeps them relatively okay. All right, so as you can see, the moiré pattern is almost unnoticeable. If you check the video on a full HD full screen, it's pretty much non-existent. So this is not an issue on the C100. For the FS5, the moiré is non-existent. It appears to handle it a little bit better than the C100, where size and compression threshold for the moiré to appear is higher than the Canon. But both cameras are similar in that matter. As for the low light comparison, we actually tested both cameras at ISO 8000, 12600 and 20000. So here's the Canon C100 at ISO 8000. Quite clean, not that much noisy, perfectly usable if you need to rely on such a low light scene. So the Canon C100 at ISO 8000 is perfectly usable, in my opinion. Here we can see the FS5 at ISO 8000 in S-Log. The noise is heavy, but the image could be usable with some denoising. Now C100 at ISO 12600. Uh, it's a little bit more noisier, but nothing that can't be salvaged in post. With a good denoiser, it's still usable. Uh, not perfect, but if you need to rely on a low light scene like this, you can even bump the C100 up to ISO 12600. At 12800 ISO, the FS5 starts to fall apart, the image is degraded and has heavy noise. With S-Log though, if you color correct the footage, the image become more appealing, but again, the image is more degraded than the C100. And finally, the C100 at ISO 20,000. Pretty high ISO. Uh, yes, there is grain and noise in the image, but nothing that can't be salvaged in post with a good denoiser. So if you really, really need to push the boundaries on the C100, you can actually go up to ISO 20,000 and still get good results with a good denoiser in post. And uh, a little bit of work in post-production, you can actually end up with great results. For the FS5, ISO 20000 really degrades the image, everything looks muddy, even with a color correction on it, I wouldn't use the shot. Side by side at 20000 ISO, now starting from the left we have the C100 usable shot and the image quality is not perfect but acceptable and salvageable. Now in the middle we have the FS5 color corrected. Again, less noise once it's corrected, but the noise is more noticeable than the C100, but the shot needs a lot of work to be usable, if it is usable at all. And to the right, we have the ungraded FS5 shot. All right, so in terms of picture quality, working with a camera that has a 4K sensor, even if you're uh, recording in 1080p, you can see on the overall picture quality that all the readings are clearly visible. Everything is clean, sharp and crisp. The resolution is really, really good. As for the FS5, we get a really good performance out of it. The image has really similar details as the C100, uh, throwing a color correction on the image to match and emulate C-Log. Here we can see that both images are virtually the same. There is no clear winner here. 
All right, so if we back up a little bit and check the map in full, even the little writings on the right are still easy to read. Every single detail on the map is perfectly visible. It's crisp, sharp, and really clean. So it really pays off to have a 4K sensor, even if you're recording in downsized 1080p. Here, same story, no major difference. The FS5 and the C100 have a really similar image quality, especially when you throw a quick color correction on the footage to match C-Log. The image of both cameras are really, really good. Pixel peeping here, we have the two cameras side by side at 300% and color apart. If we wouldn't label the footage, it would be hard to distinguish both cameras from each other. Similar performance and image quality from the two cameras. All right, we're back. So as a verdict, uh, we found out that both cameras are pretty close to each other. They offer uh, features that each other uh, might not excel in. Um, so which makes for a harder choice depending on what type of filmmakers you are. Uh, like we are talking about a camera that is five to six years old at this point versus a, a newer camera. Um, but it's still surprising how the C100 can stack against this camera. So if you would have one camera to choose between the two, uh, which one and why? Um, I personally uh, prefer the C100. Uh, for what I'm doing, I don't need uh, slow motion, 60p... Uh... And I, I totally understand that, like, you don't necessarily need uh, high, frame, high speed frame rate. Exactly, exactly. Um, you can, like, 30, uh, 30p or 24p could be enough for you. Exactly. Uh, you can have like a, a, a A6300, for example, for the specialty shot for uh, for high speed. So um, why pay like the extra if you wanted it in this? Because as we've seen, the image quality, uh, the both C1, are, the, yeah, both of them are exactly uh, equal. So they're pretty similar. Yeah, pr pretty similar. It's like it, it's really, really like pixel peeping at this point. <laughs> really? uh, but like, if you have a good color correct uh, like correction facility. Uh, if you're not doing it yourself and you're sending it to, or if you know how to do it yourself and uh, you're you're pretty good at it, um, I'm can sure be done. It, it can be done. And yeah. It's uh, unnoticeable how the difference are uh, between the, the two, like the the, the sh sharpness and, and detail um, for a camera that films 4K. And well, this is 4K as well, but it, this is down sample. Um, yeah, this is a 4K sample, but it only records at 1080p. But this is. Uh, this is perfect for me. I don't actually need 4K at, at this point, so I wouldn't benefit from the 4K recording. I would, and I would probably end up using only the uh, 1080p uh, as the output. So, and like for, like I know a lot of people are talking about future proofing their their footage, but it's the same for me. I do film in 4K, but I always deliver in 1080 in yeah. 1080p. So. Is it really worth, like, of course, like, okay, you future proofing, but then I need more hard drive uh, space. Yeah. Um, because the, the 4K footage is a lot higher than this. Uh, just this at 100 megabits per second, uh, this delivers like huge files while this at 24 megabits per second. It's a piece of cake. It doesn't take much space on the hard drive and the image quality is pretty good. So it's a win-win situation uh, for me. Exactly, and you don't need a computer that will need to process all of that power, right? Oh, exactly. Um, also, like, uh, the thing is that S-Log is pretty sweet. Uh, to but me, like, I love S-Log. Uh, having the 14 steps of dynamic range, uh, 14 stops of dynamic range is amazing. If I, and like, I, I use LUT sometime to help me, um, but if I, like a personal preference, I love I love doing color correction and whatnot, but if I'm on a rush and I need to deliver a project, I would go for this because C log can be corrected like in a blink of an eye. While this, like, it requires AV color correction to to get something that is washable. Exactly. Otherwise, the S log is really really flat. You, you can you, you cannot deliver a project uh, if you don't color correct the footage before. So, for me. The C log is just perfect. It just requires minus tweaking, and you can actually uh, deliver with uh, a couple of adjustment in color correction compared to the S log. 
and that's for me this is a huge plus for me yeah s-log is definitely harder to to color correct um if it's a bigger project uh where i can send my footage to a color correction facility uh this would be my choice for yeah, sure will have more room in post to actually perform the color correction and this can be really helpful for them but Exactly. As form factor, like both of them are, are really amazing. So um, it's pretty much a draw for me. Um, other features that we can talk about, like I, I like how like the screen is, uh, and that's just how I like to set up my cameras. Um, how I can set up the screens like pretty much anywhere on this camera. Um, yeah, this one is actually pretty limited to uh, this. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it's it's pretty fine. I mean, I can uh, I can always use an external monitor and set up it set it up on top, and that's pretty good for me. It's not it's not a big issue for me. It's the same with this. Like this is a model where uh, it has the update where we can uh, record raw, so uh, we can use the Atomos uh, external monitor on it, uh, which is great. But uh, yeah, it just like adds for adds for more. Um, Outside of that, like they are pretty neck to neck. I was thinking that it would have been more of a clear winner and be like, oh yeah, like this is definitely the the way to go. They are also a, a different price range, so this is a really personal choice. Uh, if you find a super good deal on one um, and you have the money, go for it. There's no shame on owning any of these cameras. Uh, one thing I would uh, I would like to mention is that if you're looking for a low light camera. Uh, the C100 beats the FS5 hands down. Uh, on the other end, if you're shooting on bright sun, under bright uh, sunlight, bright sunlight, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, this one holds up the highlights uh, a lot better than the C100. Uh, you've seen it in the, in the comparison. Uh, for the highlight, the FS5 beats it. Uh, for the low light. The C100 actually wins hands down. Yeah, because when you grade the footage on the S-Log, like the noise kind of go away, but this straight out of camera is pretty good. And it's amazing. Yeah, and that was the same um, with the our video, the A6300 versus this camera is the same. The noise on this camera is pretty bad um, if you go in low light. So yeah, this one, it, it, like Canon really put out a really good product and like five six years later it's still holding up to uh to like bigger and uh, more expensive cameras um yeah but as you were saying it, the 14 stops <laughs> dynamic range it's nice to have so yeah. yeah that's uh and that's it so yeah like point is not a clear winner to today uh <laughs> two amazing cameras so choose whatever you prefer um any, any day we would go for any cameras, depending on the shoot we are doing. Yeah, exactly. Um, different cameras, different needs, different type of shooting. Uh, you choose, you pick up the camera that suits your need for the job you have to do. Exactly. And like this one, okay, you don't have the 14 stops of dynamic range and, and everything, but if you know how to shoot and every filmmaker yeah. know the basics. But it's not that bad, I think it's like 12 or 13 stop. It's not 14, but yeah. I think it's uh, it's really 12 stop of yeah. dynamic range. So yeah. it's You've definitely seen, not that bad. Exactly. You've seen in the test the only the highlights were, were blowing up, and we couldn't recover those. But uh, it, it's not bad. So yeah. So the, yeah, but we, <laughs> I had to crank up the ISO up to uh, 3200 32, 32 32 yeah. to match the FS uh, FS, uh, FS 5. 5. Which was in S log and as the base ISO of the base ISO is exactly. 3200. So yeah, that's another thing. S log base ISO is, is really <laughs> high, um, which is why you have an ND filter in the camera. So yeah, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment box below. Please subscribe to the channel. Find us on Facebook. We'll make more videos where Mark and I are are in the video when Hopefully. we can. <laughs> and uh, yeah, see you next time.